Are you looking for a career where you can pursue scientific curiosity and adventure? A place you can serve your country by getting up close and personal with the wonders and the forces of nature and get hands-on with emerging technologies and tactics at the forefront of science. How would you like to get paid to explore the unknown? Chart the uncharted. Protect lives, property, and the environment. If any of this sounds appealing, you can find it in the NOAA Corps. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, is one of the nation's foremost science agencies. NOAA's mission, to understand and predict changes in the Earth's environment and conserve and wisely manage coastal and marine resources. From the roiling surface of the sea to the enigmatic depths of the ocean floor, from 40,000 feet over the Pacific, to within the turbulent winds of approaching hurricanes over the Atlantic, NOAA's highly trained workforce conducts multifaceted research and reconnaissance operations to mine crucial information about the ever-evolving state of our oceans, atmosphere, ecosystems, and climate. In order to study the dynamics of sea and sky, scientists have to be in the sea and sky, aboard reliable platforms. To ensure success, it is critical that the personnel commanding these platforms have expertise not only at the helm or on the flight deck, but also in the scientific fields of endeavor which are at the heart of each mission. That is where the NOAA Corps comes in. One of the uniformed services of the United States, the NOAA Commissioned Officer Corps plays an integral part in the execution of NOAA's operations. Commanding the agency's fleet of research and survey ships on all the oceans of the world, conducting dive operations, piloting aircraft on survey missions, managing satellite programs, studying the solar environment, serving in staff positions throughout NOAA, and representing the United States in many nations around the world. The work of the NOAA Corps has a direct impact on our economy, our environment, our health, and our security, and is instrumental in fostering the advance of many scientific and engineering disciplines. The NOAA Corps was established in 1917 and has a rich history back almost to the birth of our country. Thomas Jefferson, considered to be one of the most scientific of our presidents, began a coastal survey in 1807 to improve the safety and efficiency of trade and shipping navigation. The group doing that work was the ancestor of today's NOAA Corps. From a survey of the coast, the work expanded to essential mapping skills for defense during World War II, and then to conduct oceanographic studies worldwide. Today, NOAA Corps officers serve in every environmental discipline, including oceanography, hydrography, fishery science, engineering, and meteorology. I'm a field operations officer. Oceanographer and a meteorologist. The IT officer on board. Hurricane Hunter Aircraft Commander. I'm currently a research scientist engineer. Benthic Mapping Specialist. I'm the EMT and the Medical Dive Medical Officer. I'm the Commanding Officer of the NOAA ship Thomas Jefferson. In times of crisis, NOAA Corps officers bring their education, skills, and training to bear. During the very tough 2005 hurricane season, NOAA aircraft worked around the clock before the hurricanes made landfall, flying 131 missions into the storms. See you on the staff, the Corps Gunner, as well as the CEO of the staff, the Oregon too. Afterwards, the Corps stayed on the front lines, providing critical data required to reopen ports and deliver supplies. The uh, coast of Louisiana after Hurricane Katrina um, it significantly changed the, the bathymetry at the bottom. 84 tankers were just anchored in the Gulf of Mexico, not knowing if it was safe to move about. And commercial vessels would not come into the port until we surveyed. So we sent our small boats in, did a quick survey of the channel, and 
got our information to the Coast Guard as soon as possible. And land has shifted, but we found a route that they could go in, and so um, the people of Galveston wouldn't have had supplies if we hadn't have cleared the way for them and, and known what depths were there, and so it, it is very important. NOAA Corps officers are appointed by the President and hold ranks equivalent to the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard commissioned officers. Pay, benefits, and years of service guidelines follow the same structure as the Department of Defense. As an active duty service member, I'm entitled to many benefits which include the Montgomery GI Bill, uh, full health care, and then also a possibility of retiring after 20 years. So if you start when you're 25, you retire when you're 45 with a pension. And it's fantastic. It's the same benefit package that all other officers receive in, for example, the Navy or the Coast Guard. Also uncommon with other branches of the uniformed service, the NOAA Corps adheres to a strict code of discipline and integrity built on its core values of honor, respect, and commitment. The NOAA Corps experience is a mobile one. Officers alternate between land-based and shipboard assignments every two to three years and may be called upon to move from one side of the country to the other. Although assignments are based primarily on need and availability, whenever possible the Corps works to match officers to assignments based on interest, background, and personal preference. This allows officers to develop a professional path early in their career from the many different opportunities that the Corps offers. Noah was willing to take me as, as really just an educated but not trained person and give me all of this training, all of this experience in hydrographic survey, ship driving, operations of a large organization. I was given leadership roles, so many things that in, you know, in a civilian life I wouldn't be able to do in that amount of time. You can make your own career by making connections, contacts, doing a good job in your current assignment. Um, showing that you have the skills to do the next job you want to do. The career of a NOAA Corps officer begins after completion of educational requirements, including a bachelor's degree or higher in engineering, mathematics, or science related to NOAA's mission. After citizenship, medical, and other screenings, the officer candidate must complete the Basic Officer Training Class, or BOTC, held at the United States Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. BOTC is a rigorous four to five month program that introduces officers to many new and exciting challenges. In classrooms, simulators, small watercraft, and aboard NOAA vessels and the USCG Bark Eagle, officer candidates are taught onboard ship handling skills, including navigation, seamanship, charting, rescue skills, and firefighting. They also learn the NOAA organization and missions, as well as military protocol. The classes are typically made up of 15 to 20 officers who may work together or cross paths all throughout their ensuing careers. Upon successful completion of BOTC, the graduates, now junior officers with the rank of ensign, are assigned to a 30 to 36 month sea tour aboard one of NOAA's research vessels. You can work on ships all the way around the coast, from Massachusetts all the way down across the Gulf and out to Hawaii and Alaska. Shipboard duties in the NOAA Corps are typically two to three year assignments, with deployments ranging from three days to 40 days at a time. NOAA Corps officers are expected to safely operate ships in challenging and often harsh environmental conditions. They are entrusted with the lives of the crew, scientists, and the safety of multi-million dollar platforms. Well, if you have the privilege of becoming a NOAA Corps officer, the role of a junior officer is that you learn how to drive the ship, uh, safely navigate it, become a qualified officer of the deck. Order to 150 RPMs. That OOD letter means that they are qualified and have my confidence to drive the ship while I'm not on the bridge watching them. And that's a lot of confidence because I have to lay down and go to sleep at night while they're driving the ship. So the ship is in their hands, but their training in officer training class plus the training they get here prepares them well to do that. I graduated two months ago and in that time I went from a recruit to being in charge of a navigation watch on board a 208 foot vessel. So the responsibility of that is really amazing and that's the neat thing about the NOAA Corps is you can move so quickly 
and gain so much experience in such a short amount of time. My name is Matt Burton. I've been in the NOAA Corps for a year and a half. I'm an ensign and I'm the navigation officer on the NOAA ship Ronald H. Brown. Okay, this ship is, based, is mostly used for oceanographic research. That includes deep water sampling with CTD cast down to very deep depths. And also we do surface air sampling to get a complete picture of what's happening above and below the water. My job as a navigation officer, uh, the scientists give us waypoints of where they want to go to get their samples and I have to make sure that we get there when we're supposed to get there in the right position at the right time for them to collect their samples. What's important um, as far as the scientific background goes is the ability to communicate with the scientists. While you're using your technical skills to drive the ship and manage the ship, you still need to have an idea of what's going on with the pro scientific projects to be able to communicate with them and understand what they're doing and what they need from the ship as a platform for their project. Since I've been on this ship, uh, I've traveled around the world, um, I've met a lot of interesting people, learned a lot from those people. I've been able to uh, get some dive training from one of the most elite diving centers in the world. Uh, it's been very challenging but very rewarding. On the oceanographic and fisheries ships, you're basically operating the platform for the scientists to come on board and collect the data. And so you take them out for 30, 60, 90 days and then they get off with their data and go away. On a hydrographic survey ship, you're collecting the data, you're processing the data, you are the scientist, you are the project manager. Hydrography, in a nutshell, is where you take sonar and we actually map the bottom of the ocean. And this is important because that's what we use to create the nautical charts that uh, commercial and recreational mariners use every day. Uh, that's what they use to get safely in and out of port. To know the depth is very important. You don't want them to crash. You don't want them to run aground. You want to know what wrecks are underneath so that they don't snag. Well, my name is Anson Andrew Ostapenko. I've been in the Corps for about a year now, uh, and I'm a junior officer aboard the Thomas Jefferson. The nice thing about this job is there's most of the most of the work is that you're not sitting behind a desk. Uh, for example. I'm right now training for the hydrographer in charge qualification as well as the coxswain qualification. So I'll be splitting my time between driving the boat and um, running the acquisition on the boat. Uh, so um, I'll actually be out there conducting operations. Interested Corps officers are encouraged to take part in the NOAA diving program. To train and become certified to perform diving operations throughout the oceans and inland waters of the world. From the crystal clear waters of a marine sanctuary to murky low visibility conditions such as rivers or harbors. To become a NOAA diver, you get selected from your ship to go, hopefully, if you're one of the fortunate ones. And you go to NOAA dive training. It's a three and a half week course. It's very intense. It's some of the hardest work I've ever done. They challenge you, but you come out of it. For me, I had never dove before. I come out of it a confident, capable working diver. Underwater projects may occur in tropical areas where water temperatures are in the high 80s, or Arctic seas where they dip below freezing. Tasks include performing routine and emergency ship repair and maintenance, locating and removing submerged marine hazards, and collecting data on fish or marine mammal behaviors. In some of the world's most demanding flight conditions, selected officers serve as pilots and navigators aboard NOAA's versatile fleet of aircraft. Over open oceans, coastal wetlands, Arctic pack ice, and within Category 5 hurricanes, NOAA Corps aviators provide the airborne platform for scientists to get the bird's eye view on global assessment, prediction, and stewardship of the Earth's environment. Six miles from your turn point, Mark, it's going to be a left-hand turn. My name is Lieutenant Commander Carl Newman. I've been in the NOAA Corps for the last nine years, and I'm a NOAA P-3 pilot. Flying in a hurricane is mostly like a long, uncomfortable flight. People think it's very dramatic at all times, and it's really not. It's just a lot of, uh, a lot of pounding that's not too bad. Sometimes it is dramatic, 
but uh, most of the time it's just basically collecting science in a long eight to ten hour mission. Stand by to drop. Three, two, one, drop. The P3 basically is a flying meteorological station. We collect all the normal meteorological parameters like air speeds, wind speeds, dew points, temperatures, what the wind speed is to the surface, wind speed at altitude, to accurately uh, forecast the storm and measure where the storm's going. NOAA has a peacetime mission. Uh, every time we go flying on this plane, we're conducting a mission and uh, we're gathering information that, uh, or, or providing information to the general public on a daily basis. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I just didn't get that kind of reward. It was a, a lot of training for a few uh, actual missions uh, here and there, um, but every day here is a mission. Every time I climb down from that ladder after a flight, I feel a great uh, sense of job satisfaction. Every time we fly an airplane, we're collecting data, and you know that data is going somewhere, and it's meaningful data. Everything you do has a direct impact on the scientific community, and I can't think of anything more interesting than kind of quantifying the world that we live in. It's a very interesting job. It's never the same. You're always doing something different. The profiles are different, and it's a great job. Really exciting work. In between sea assignments, a Corps officer's unique operational expertise will make him or her a sought-after addition to any land-based project team throughout the agency. Research labs, forecast centers, small boat handling, operational centers, as well as headquarter positions give Corps officers opportunities to apply their leadership skills, diversify and advance their careers, and keep their feet on the ground for a while. Are we gonna go out and catch this little bit? Okay. I'm Lieutenant Natasha Davis. I work down here in Miami. I've been in the Corps for five years. Right now I do um, a lot of fisheries research and logistics at the Southeast Fisheries Science Center. My previous assignment was on the NOAA ship Miller Freeman out in the Gulf of Alaska. Her home port is in Seattle. And when she's a stern trawler, so we did a lot of fisheries research and a lot of uh, interacting with the scientists and helping them collect the data, uh, just facilitating their work. And then I moved down here to Miami and now I'm actually working directly with the scientists. I am a scientist. I get to go out on NOAA vessels as a scientist, and I'm out here in the field collecting the data. Let's see what we got. This is what I would have hoped to do. I didn't think that NOAA would let me get that directly involved with the science. I get to do all kinds of things. I have my hands in you know, presentations, data analysis, field work, logistics, dive operations. The NOAA Corps is a nice opportunity because you can get into so many different things. There's a lot of flexibility in the career. You move around every two to three years, which has its own hardships, but it also means that you're always learning something new. You get a broad exposure to what you're interested in. If you're not sure what you want to settle into a career, NOAA Corps is a great way to go because you can get around, you can talk to a lot of people, and maybe you fall in love with it. You know, I plan on staying in. The NOAA Corps offers diverse opportunities not found in any other career to serve your country in unique and exciting ways at the forefront of scientific progress. If you're truly passionate about science and about service, it's a, it's a good fit and there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of paths within the Corps. You do have input and you get to kind of choose your career path to a certain degree, so it's, you're mobile, you're, you're flexible. Once you get in to find out what you like, you have some input into where you go and, where you're, and what you're going to be doing. I've had eight different assignments in a variety of fields, and they've all been diverse. They've been technical to, to managerial to, to leadership roles. And, and I really enjoy that diversity of assignments and the diversity of location. There's different leadership opportunities, different opportunities to travel. It's, it's an amazing adventure. Well, it, it's kind of kind of interesting. I have a friend who works for an NBA basketball team and he has a pretty important job and he sent me a picture from his office window looking out over Washington DC and, and the caption said this is the picture from my office. So over the course of a few days I took pictures out of the windows of the ship you know, sailing past mountains in Alaska looking at whales Then I sent them all to him. I said this is the picture from my office. I think I have a better job. For more information about the NOAA Corps, please visit our website or contact NOAA's Commissioned Personnel Center.